we can start with our meeting. I want to describe um, some some features and some uh, information about Ocean Store V5. And um, there are some main topics. And first, it's uh, how to manage Ocean Store V5 devices. Uh, the second one is uh, how to handle error received on Ocean Store V5. And then we will discuss about, uh, about Ocean Store SNS. There are some sound switches which are connected to Ocean Store V5. So let's begin with managing Ocean Store V5. We have uh, developed a tool. Uh, in the past, it was called the Ocean Store Toolkit. And uh, recently, we developed another tool. It's uh, called Smart Kit. It's, uh, it can cover everything from, small, from Toolkit. With this tool, we can manage our devices. For example, example we have, we have uh, Ocean Store V5, but also we have Ocean Store V3 in our environment, and we want to manage them. We have this tool, it's called Smart Kit, and with, through Smart Kit, we can uh, deploy, maintaining and upgrade our devices. For example, you want just, for the beginning, you want just to run the, the health check of the Ocean Store V5, and um, this can be can be made uh, through the smart kit. After that, uh, if there is no error, you don't want to check the health check. If you want to deploy your Ocean Store V5, or if you want to extend your Ocean Store V5, you can do these steps um, also from smart kit. For example, if you want to add a new controller, you want to use you need to use smart kit. First, you need to use market for checking if your storage is able to for expansion. Then you want to proceed with the expansion and you will check if the expansion was successful. Through smart kit, uh, you can also do, uh, run the upgrade of the firmware of your Ocean Store V5. But we recommend when we want to upgrade our devices, we recommend the running inspection first. So every time when we handle some, uh, some issues like this, uh, or for requests like this, we will uh, require for the customer or the uh, partners, we require the inspection first because we want to analyze the result of your device or devices, depends how many you want to upgrade. And then based on these uh, requirements, we will analyze and based on this, we will uh, reply with the solution and if it's possible or not. Why I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, it's um, if it's possible or not, it's because most of the devices, maybe they don't support the upgrade based on the alarm on the error that they have. So first, we need to solve these problems and check the, the total health inspection of the storage. And if the storage is able to make the upgrade of the former, we will receive and we will provide the solution. What is market? As I told you before, this market is, to, is used for device installation, deployment and maintaining. But smart also also cover, can cover more than this. And it's not just used for the storage, it can be used for cloud, it can be used for servers. So you can upgrade your entire entire um, data center if you have more than one storage or other server or, I don't know, cloud computing, you can proceed to upgrade them by smart, smart kit. For the beginning, I will, maybe you know, maybe you don't know how it's looking the smart kit. But I will explain the main interface when you log in, in this market. For sure, you need to, to have a, an account. Without an account, you can also use market, but you will not be able to have access to more features. Uh, for example, in, this, in our case, we are logged as a Huawei engineer. As you can see, the number four from our screen is the user account that we used. 
and I will give an example how to add a device in this market because this is the first step that you must do. First, you need to add a device, then you need to proceed with uh, maintaining, upgrading, or expansion that device. For adding the device, you can follow the number one from the screen. And then I will give the explanation here. The number one is the navigation tree. You can enable your selection. For example, you can add device and what does it mean software package? The software package is the package that SmartKit has included because you can use SmartKit in offline mode or SmartKit in online mode. For example, if you have uh, your server or your computer where the SmartKit is installed, you can use it in offline mode. What does it mean offline mode? For the SmartKit offline mode, it means that you have no access to the internet, but uh, you are also be able to access and manage your devices. How you can do that? You can add the devices because the SmartKit is working on the server, which is on the same uh, network segment like your storage device. But if you want to upgrade, the device or if you want to upgrade this firmware maybe you will not be able to see this option because you need, don't have the package and the package it can be downloaded first from the support website of uh, huawei and then you can import the package in through this market so don't you don't need uh, to have um, internet access to this computer but you need to have the package to, for in order to import them if you have internet access, access to the server where the smart kit uh, resides, uh, you can uh, just log in with your account and then uh, you can download the package online. So in one time, so you can download all the package that you need. For example, if you want to have your disk firmware, you will search the package for the disk firmware you will download the package and then you will be able to use this option to smart it. The number two from the screen is the switch language. You can choose the language that you, you want to use. For example, if you want to use English, Spain, from Spain, Italy, or you can use Chinese. You can just switch the button and change the language. The number three button, it's uh, used for obtaining help. For example, if you want to search something like uh, firmware upgrade and you don't know how to use this uh, option for the storage, but also I will, I need to tell you that uh, firmware uh, upgrade of the devices, we are talking about V5 in this topic, and you need to know that you cannot do this by yourself if the device it's working uh, in production and it's online uh, in offline mode your device it can be uh, upgraded by yourself but also you need to provide to our engineers the inspection result in order to check if everything is all right there and uh, to check if the firmware is not the latest or need to be updated we will decide this and we will provide the final result The number four, as I told you, is the login button. And in this example, it's uh, we're logged as a Huawei engineer. But maybe some engineer from, or some partners, they have a customer, they have uh, firewalls used in the data center and uh, the computer with the smart design. Maybe it's not in the same place. So also, you can choose to set your own proxy in this market because most of the customers are using proxy and they are not able to access devices if the um, proxy is not set also through this market. So you can use these settings and uh, you can just uh, use your own proxy. Then you will be able to log in with your account and add the device. Otherwise, maybe it will fail to other device is the proxy is not used. The number five is the authentication button. 
it enables you to authenticate your identity in order to obtain more function. The number six. Here is described the function that Ocean Store, uh, the market that they have. You can have, uh, you can see upgrade consultant. You can uh, choose this before upgrading your device or ultra pad deployment. The number seven. The number seven from a smart kit uh, web interface. It's, uh, it lets you to choose uh, which device you want to operate. For example, we choose here the storage device because we are talking about V5 storage, but maybe you want to upgrade devices from your own data center and you have server or cloud computing. So you need to choose server button and add your server. If you want to add more servers, not just one or more storages, in one time, you can add them when the, you have, um, you can import. We have a template, import that configuration with all the devices in there, and you can, uh, this is batch configuration and batch uh, command that you can use in that temple and then temple and then add them in the market. The number eight. Number eight, it's uh, prompt to the upgrades market and uh, the library that smart market is using. Uh, the, as I told you before, this market can be used in offline mode and online mode. Uh, in offline mode market, uh, it has, uh, it will receive uh, a, a message if it has not been upgraded within 180 days. So it's better for you to have the, the tool uh, up uh, updating time, but maybe you don't know which one is the latest for version. And uh, for that, we recommend to use support from a Huawei website and um, from through the smart kit uh, page, you can see the software download and you will see the, the latest uh, smart kit version. Uh, down to that page, you will find also the, the guide how to install the smart kit or how to upgrade the latest version. I'm telling you this because uh, in the past I saw many customers which are not able to add devices through the old market, or maybe you receive uh, an error when you try to upgrade. So you need to have this market update because uh, also the storage ha has need to be updated in time or to have the latest firmware. The number 10 is the function management button. So this function display all the function integrated in the market. You can install or uninstall one function if you want. This is what I, uh, this uh, option, it's about what I'm telling you, what I told you before. It's um, about the function that Ocean's this market have. And uh, you can use it as I told you offline or online. You can use the function uh, from uh, install the function from our website or uh, already have it in your computer and just uh, use it in offline mode. The number 10. If you want to, for example, expand your storage and expand the capacity, but as you can see here, if you want to expand uh, the this domain, you are not able to, or at the control, you're not able to use this uh, this button because it's gray. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, it means that uh, the package for this um, for this option is not installed. So it's better to uh, you install this package in order to be able to to use them. If you want to add the controller, you can add the controller after you install the package. But as I told you, you need the inspection first, adding the controller. What customers do or partners do without uh, Huawei engineer support? They can uh, use, uh, for example, disk replacement or uh, module replacement of the controller or the controller replacement. 
uh, if you are sure that uh, there are two controllers, for example, in the storage and uh, both of them are working and uh, in the inspection, everything is okay and they have redundance link, uh, you can replace one controller through smart kit, not just replace it uh, physically from the device. Uh, when you try to, to replace the controller, for example, you will see uh, the controller uh, faulty. The smart key will tell you that controller A is faulty, so you need to replace it in five minutes after you'll choose this option. So it can be done fast and then put it inside. Uh, and you'll see that uh, the the firmware uh, after the controller is replaced, the firmware it will be, it will start to synchronize between two controllers, because the new controller which where it come uh, when it come it doesn't have the same firmware that uh, the own controller of the storage has. So it will take maybe 35 or 40 minutes to synchronize the firmware. Uh, these uh, steps about replacing disk and uh, replacing controller, it's, uh, it can be made uh, through number 12, it's uh, parts replacement. Also, you can replace uh, every part for the storage uh, through this uh, option. The last step, in case you need to know I don't know some information about small kit. Uh, some, uh, if you want to to, to receive some uh, some help about uh, this, you can have also the I know robot. You can choose this, and you will find uh, some cases related to small kit. Uh, this is uh, there are there are some cases related about small kit, and uh, is written from about so, from some engineers uh, which they have some experience with that, and they had uh, some issues and uh, they written down all the steps how to solve that and how to manage for example you can try it you can install smart kit and you can try these things and you'll see they're very they will help you so much i told you about storage how to maintain how to replace part how to upgrade but uh, first for that you need to add a device so we choose in the first page we choose storage because we need to use storage and then we will press the button devices and then add the devices and you will find that page if you want to add also the server at the same time you can also add the server if you want to manage the server but here you can add the device first Enable, in order to be able to add a device, you should know the username and the password for your device. And then uh, you can add it. But if you, has, if you have maybe more than one device in your data center and uh, you want to, to add them, as I told you before, you have to choose the batch import. But for that, our smart kit doesn't know uh, if you write in one, if you will write down in one uh, file all the device that you have, the story, the smart kit will not know how to choose them and how to import them. So that's why you need to first you need to get a template file. In that template, in the same order, you need to written write down the the device IP management, the device username, and the device password. After that, you will save the file and then you will choose batch import and then you will choose your file from the local computer and you will be able to add all the devices in here. After adding the device, you will find it down. The model, the version that you have in your device and then you will compare with our website in order to see that uh, your device has the latest firmware. The name of the device, the IP address is mean the management IP, the serial, serial number of the device, the username, and the port. Here you will not find the information about the password because this one is encrypted and uh, it's not safe to have the password uh, here. Now we will discuss uh, about uh, how to handle an error receiving your Ocean Store V5. Maybe you already know the, 
the procedure, how to analyze and how to start with the investigation when you receive an error and uh, in your devices. Uh, for example, your device manager will inform you uh, that you have an alarm. Depends, uh, the alarm are uh, most of them uh, separate. It can be major alarm, it can be uh, just uh, an event, for example, but you need to know how to handle this. So for sure it's, uh, it's better to ask or open a ticket to our engineer in order to support you, in order to check if that alarm, it's, uh, I don't know, it, it will affect your performance, it will affect your storage, uh, it will affect your workloads in the in your data center. So first, uh, you need to observe the symptom of, uh, of the information, so of the storage, and you need to collect the information from storage. How you can do that? Uh, you will not be able to analyze the storage logs. Uh, maybe you can check them, but it's better to let an engineer to do that. And you can collect the information through device manager. Uh, maybe for most of the cases where the just one disk is faulty, for example, in your device. You can collect the information and the logs from the device, from device manager. It will be enough for us to check if the disk is faulty uh, or is uh, just a false alarm about the disk or uh, you need to replace the disk. So the logs collected from device manager will be enough. But for other cases like performance issue uh, or other things, uh, you will not find this information uh, in the logs from device managers. So that's why I introduced you the smart kit. In the past, we are used to use uh, the Ocean Store toolkit, but now it's smart kit, the latest one. Um, so from there, you can collect the performance logs. Uh, this is the new function that smart kit have to collect the performance logs because in the past, you are used to collect performance logs directly from, from the controllers. So it's a bit complicated uh, that uh, you need to collect, connect to controllers with uh, Wins SUP, for example, and then uh, download some files from there and send us as well. But now you can collect the performance logs through smart kits. So it's much, uh, much easy. And for us also it's much easy to analyze your performance issue. The storage will uh, not receive the alarm and will not let you know that there is an alarm until the alarm is recovered. What does it mean? Uh, for example, if the storage has an alarm and uh, in the logs we will see that is recoverable, but uh, also we need to handle this. Uh, also the storage recovered the alarm, maybe in the future it will reappear. So it's better to solve the problem, not just clear the alarm from the device manager because it will, after one hour, or to uh, tell you that the, again there is a problem, so you need to handle. Not most of the customers are used to mask the alarm, so this is not a recommended step to mask the alarm. What does it mean masking the alarm? Masking the alarm, it's uh, it can be done by uh, command line. You will need to connect uh, on the, your storage and. Um, use a command line to mask the alarm but this is not recommended yes it's true when you mask the alarm the story will not tell you that there is an alarm there is a problem so you can mask the alarm you can use this function most of the time when you want to upgrade the storage and you are not able to solve the problem in that time and you need to mask that alarm i will give an example there is an alarm about the dns server so this is this will not impact your storage this will not affect your performance but you want to upgrade the storage and you are not able for this. What you need to do? You need to mask the alarm and you will use the command line for masking the alarm and then you will proceed with the upgrade. In the end, when everything is okay, you can go back and uh, use the mask alarm off so that uh, you can have the same alarm and then you solve the problem about the DNS. I told you about collecting storage system information and send us in order to check if there is a problem or if it is a problem, how to solve the problem. You can do that 
through device manager. Most of these logs are used in case of hardware failure. So you need to choose the settings and export data. But here you need to use all the, um, to press all the buttons that you have in there. For example, the system log, we need a recent, recent log and all logs. It's better to use all logs. The disk logs, uh, we need to have this information. Or maybe there is a um, SSD disk and um, there is about, uh, there has some, I don't know, some errors in that disk or you need to, to know if the disk should be replaced or the lifetime it's about to be end and uh, we will check that in the log. I mentioned you before about managing events. Through device manager, you will find the alarm and the events. These are um, recite in device manager based on the uh, in based on the importance. For example, if you have a major alarm, you need to handle it first. If just uh, it's an event, doesn't mean that uh, it means that there is a I don't know. Just uh, tell you that there is not a problem. There is some configuration that is missing some connection to your control that are not uh, not right for example you have the controller but you need to have all the connection between them in order to have redundance so this is not a major it could be also an event so we need to handle this our second topics it's about ocean store sns and i choose here ocean store sns 2624 this is just an example it's about all the switches the Ocean Store SNS, I choose to present this because it's a fiber channel switch and this switch are connected to our storages, uh, in our case, Ocean Store V5. Um, the hardware feature of the Ocean Store SNS are that um, it can have uh, 24 ports but what I can, what I want to tell you and what I want to inform you is very useful information that those ports uh, on the switch, maybe they don't have dynamic uh, POD. Uh, what does it mean, the dynamic POD? Most of the customer or partner uh, open a ticket to us and inform us that some ports from the switch, it cannot be used. So. It was usable in the past, but after the reboot of the switch, they cannot, they are not able to use some ports. For example, we have 24 ports, but the license is for four end ports. When you have rebooted, when you reboot the switch and you have dynamic POD set on your switch, after the reboot, the switch with uh, allocate the license maybe to other ports so maybe the four for the for example number four for the switch it was usable before let's choose number seven the number seven port from the switch last yesterday it can be used but after the reboot in this morning you will not be able to use the number seven port what does it mean it means that your dynamic pod is used and it will allocate the license to the number eight. So the number seven cannot be used. You need to be aware of this and you need to, to set if you want and enable disable the dynamic POD and uh, you will be able to use again the number seven if you will disable the dynamic POD. All you need to choose which port should be used even if you restart the switch. The switch can has um, ports for uh, use for long distance and short distance. Uh, you should be aware of this because um, it will affect your performance and your connection through your device, uh, through storage device. Uh, if the storage has uh, 16 gigabytes uh, port and the SFP and uh, the, the switch has eight gigabytes, it will affect the performance. So you need to have the same speed also in your switch 
the switch has uh, SFP uh, not included. So maybe in case of an error, maybe the problem not uh, it not came from the port of the switch. Maybe the problem came from the SFP. But be aware when replacing the SFP, it should be the same, and you need to check if it's using long distance and short distance. In order to investigate the switch problem, our engineer will request you to collect the logs. How you can do that? I think there is not so easy steps to collect the logs. Uh, why is not so easy? It's easy, but you can have some uh, issues when collecting the logs. Most of them have this issue. When you run the support save command, the switch will request you to have uh, installed in your computer the FTP server. In our example, you can use FTP or SFTP. But for other switches, you will not be able to use uh, FTP. You will be able to use SFTP. Why? Because uh, this one is uh, based on your firmware. The firmware is Fabric OS that the switch has. So for the, the latest one, 801, uh, you will be uh, able to use just the SFTP. This is just an example. The switch will ask you to insert the IP address or the host name. For most of you, maybe you will not know what is the host IP. And then you will choose here the switch IP address. But this is wrong. You need to choose here, for example, you have FileZilla in your computer. And you will choose FileZilla settings to use local settings, local host. And then in the host IP, you need to insert the IP address from the computer where the FileZilla resides. Yes. But you need to be aware that the switch, if it's not in the same data center and it's in another place, you need to be aware that the, maybe in the computer it has the file. You need to disable the firewall in order to be able to use uh, and connect to the switch. So use the host IP address and then connect with username and password of the switch, not of the host. You need to read written here. You need to write here the switch username and the switch password and then choose the FTP or SFTP and then run the support save. And all the logs will be saved in the location that your FileZilla was set to save. So you need to create a share in your FileZilla server, and then the support save output command will save all the information in there. Maybe you will not be able to use support save. Maybe you'll have some firewall. Maybe you don't have admin uh, on your admin uh, rights on your server. and it's better to connect on the switch from web interface, but you will not be if you will not be able to connect on the switch on the web interface, you can use the command support show. The support show command it's the same like support save, and uh, it can it will. Um, it will run all the commands that support save do, and it will run all the command and it will reply with all the all the request, and then you receive all this information in one screen. So you can, if you, for example, if you are using Putty, you can save and export the result from your screen and save them in one notepad, for example, or one takes the file and provide us we will be able to analyze the switch logs. This interface and this image, it's um, after, we, after we connect on the web interface of the switch. So you can be able to collect the logs also from here, but you need to be aware when connecting the web interface of the switch, you'll be aware of the Java. You should have the IP of the management of the switch added in the trusted uh, zone of your Java settings so i will show you after that one case i will share with you one case for example the case came from switzerland 
and is related to ocean store SNS2224. What does it mean? Um, they have a problem in here when trying to connect on the web interface. And uh, this customer also has installed the Brocade Network Advisor and he is not able to manage the switch from there. This problem occur after he installed and update his Java. The current Java that they used, it's 801. It's 180, sorry, it's 180, and the fabric OS is 801B. This problem, maybe if you want to try to test and if you want to, to see if you'll have it, yes, you will receive it because uh, the Java has some changes in the after the upgrade, and uh, you will need, uh, I will say, show you the steps how to handle this, uh, this, uh, this error. So after you log in on the web interface, you will receive the secure connection failed. The message is about SSL error, and you will need to proceed and check. The Java version is installed. If it's uh, 180 and, uh, and the e Internet Explorer that you have is 11, you need to follow the TLS encryption algorithm. Okay, for that, we check the Fabric OS and it's 810B and then the Java is 180. Now we need to go further and check the TLS. So we need to run the this command. After running this command, we can see that the encryption algorithm TLS is configured to strong. This command, it must be run on the switch, on your switch. In order to be able to manage this switch, you need to change the encryption algorithm. So you need to use the default settings. And then also on the switch, you need to run this command and you will use default generic settings this is not enough after that you will go in your internet explorer and use tls one zero one one and one two and also the ssl 3.0 the same like here in java also need to use tls one zero one one and one two after that you need to go in your internet explorer and add the trusted site. In the trusted site, add the IP address of the switch. 